Good morning, class. Uh, this week we are, are we are reading chapter two and three of math, and it is like fifteen pages long, so it's really not terribly bad. Remember, I do want you to be following along with your book because listening to me talk is best when looking at words so you can see the words and you know how to pronounce it. So please follow along with your book and remember I will be grading your notes. Not for the quality, I'll be grading for completion. So I expect you to be taking notes with chapters two and three and they are due by the beginning of class Friday. Okay. Chapter two. We were all up early the next morning packing Will's backpack with some of his favorite stuff. If he had never even been emptied from our vacation, not time, no time yesterday. Dad put in the portable game of chess. Mom chose a few books she thought she'd read to him, but they looked pretty boring to me. I added the Walkman and all of his best tapes. Oh yeah, and I dug out his old teddy bear. India Bado from the attic and slipped it in. India Bado with his chewed ear and only one glass eye. I remembered when mom had tried to sew on a new eye. Will wouldn't let her. He said India Bado had lost it honorably and wouldn't want it replaced with a button. Mom and I walked to the bus stop Dad was following with the backpack later in the car. He was phoning work and trying to get an extension on a research project he was finishing up, so he'd have more time with Will. We had just passed old Mr. Raleigh's house. He was in the front yard sprinkling salt on the slugs. That's the kind of thing he enjoys. Here's someone's in the hospital. He shouted at Mom. He always shouts. Yes, our older son, William. We're on our way to see him now. I could tell Mom didn't want to stop and talk to him, but Mom's nice to everyone, even if they don't deserve it. What's he got? Broken bone from all that football and basketball, I guess? He was busy now with a pair of clippers trimming, the, uh, trimming out some poor scraggly bush. By the way, someone's been cutting across my lawn on their bike. He glared at me. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Rowley. Mom said, we really have to go now. Please say hello to Mrs. Rowley for us. She started to walk away before he could answer. I could tell from the sound of her high heels on the pavement that she was fed up with Rowley. You mad, Mom? She turned to look at me and seemed sort of surprised. Yes, I guess I am, Peter. She shifted her pocketbook to her other arm. I'm angry and sad and even a little frightened. I think you are probably too. I nodded. It's just so hard to believe. I mean, Will was fine. And then all of a sudden, I know. It's all happened so quickly. We barely had time to talk. She reached up for my hand as we walked. It was it felt weird. We hadn't held hands for a long time. I guess I decided it was kind of babyish. But it was okay to hold her hand now. This is going to be a hard time, Peter. Especially both your father and he working. Yeah, I know. But we'll manage, Mom. Besides, school doesn't even start for a while. I walked along, trying to miss stepping on the cracks on the sidewalk. It's a stupid habit. I got into it when I was younger. Mom squeezed my hand and didn't say anything else as we caught our bus for the short ride to the hospital. I could see her chewing on the inside of her mouth. She always does that when she gets worried. When Will's room, when we got to Will's room, he was in his wheelchair. He looked about the same as he had the day before. 
I brought you some clean pajamas, Will. Peter, can you help me get him into bed? You've got his top half. I'll get out of his legs. I moved the chair nearer the bed and slid my arms under his legs. But the chair began to roll and bumped Mom's legs. Wait a second, Peter. The brakes not hold him. She fiddled with it. I could see a few gray hairs on the top of her head. I hadn't noticed them before. It's such an old chair. The physical therapy department is trying to get a better one. One with a headrest. But goodness knows how long that will take. They said it could be months. Alarms went off in my head. Months? How could she be talking about months? Will didn't need the stupid chair that long. My mind was racing. But I didn't want to say anything in front of Will. There. It's braced by the bed. Ready, Peter? She said, grasping Will under the knees. Lift! I managed to get his torso onto the bed, but his legs hung helplessly off of Mom's struggle with the, their weight. I started to help her. Getting him into his pajamas wasn't easy either. We'll try to cooperate. But his arms and legs felt heavy and useless. Let's see if Dad's here, I said. I, when we'd finish, I nodded my head toward the hall and winked. Mom looked puzzled. Come on, I said, winking again slower. Oh, yeah. Uh, be right back, Will, she said, tucking him in. Are you telling me everything, Mom? I blurted out once we were in the hall. I mean... What's all this about getting a new chair in months? Months? He won't need a chair by then. Heck, he's going to be out of that thing in days. I waited for her to say something. That's right, isn't it? I asked. He'll be walking long before that. She frowned. Of course, that's what we hope. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you don't sound too sure. Peter, the doctors aren't sure. She brushed a stray piece of hair off of her forehead. They're doing another test today. Then maybe we'll know more. She waited, but I had nothing to say. I'll phone home now and see what's keeping your father. I went back to Will's bed. He drifted off. I watched him sleeping and felt better. At least when he was sleeping, he still looked like Will. I thought about all the times he'd wa I'd watch him sleep since we were little kids. We'd always shared a bedroom, and I usually the first one to get up. I'd stare at him and try to wish him awake, so he'd get up and play with me, and it worked, too. One minute, he'd be lying there very 